Um, morning, everybody. Um, thank you for coming. It's a, a really sat Saturday at half eight. This is this is um, an absolutely heroic performance um, on your part. Um, thank you for joining us in this. Um, was this is the second edition, really, of the Islamic Archaeology in Europe session, which we started last year in Maastricht, and um, we hope that you will find the papers interesting. Indeed, we have a very um, very wide array of papers covering different periods, different um, regions, and I, th I think that we have a, a very um, a very good selection of um, of what's happening in the field. And I hope that the discussion will also be um, will also be very rich. Um, we're going to start with a little introductory paper by one of my co-organisers, <laughs> Chloe Duckworth, at Newcastle University. Um, and she's just going to make a few introductory remarks. Yeah. So I'll leave. The field to her. Excellent. Okay. Um, I don't have the time here, so you might want if you could just let me know if I'm running over. Ah. Morning, everyone. Um, two years ago, we were at the EAA conference. David and I were at the EAA conference in Vilnius in the two a.m. And at that time, um, I said, "I'm not organising any more conferences. I'm not organising any more sessions, and I'm definitely not editing any more volumes." Uh, we've probably all been there. And then we we went to some of the Merck sessions and we saw all this brilliant stuff that's now coming out with, with more work on medieval archaeology and kind of the, the EAA and the EJA, the journal as well, being kind of more engaged with a wider time period. But one thing we noticed well, that struck me at the time um, as somebody who was going in more heavily into looking at Islamic archaeology was the lack of sessions catering to that, and consequently the lack of papers catering to that. Um, so I sort of discussed this with David, and by the time we were taking the flight home, we were already drafting the abstract for, for the session which we held last year in Maastricht. So unfortunately, um, all these kinds of promises, as you probably also know, don't tend to, uh, don't tend to, to pan out. Um, so since then, Maastricht last year was, was very successful and we had some really amazing papers, although I personally wasn't able to attend. And out of that, we're, we're editing a volume. Um, but there was just so much and we felt that it would be really, really good if we could actually continue this. And so we've, we've continued it to this year. And I don't know, who knows what we'll do next year, but considering the amount of the level of, of engagement that this is seeing, I think, you know, maybe this would be something that we continue. Um, so this year we're co-organising with um, Vladimir Koval. Uh, so there are now three of us, and I think we have a really interesting, wide geographical and temporal range to the, to the presentations and the themes being looked at. <coughs> I think there are, I mean, you could criticise this, and I'm going to criticise it, because I like to criticise myself before other people get their, get their shot. Um, if we go all the way back to Edward Said and Orientalism, um, one of his criticisms was that we tend to homogenise um, the East or Islam. Um, and by holding a session like this, one might argue that we're doing just that. The criticism, one of the big criticisms of his own work was that it homogenises the West. And so you might ask, why are we holding this um, session, which maybe has the, the effect of doing that, of polarising the sort of general Merck um, Western Northern European themes with, with Islamic archaeology and a slightly different geographical focus? Um, I, think, I think there are reasons that, that this is necessary. I think we have bigger problems on our plate at the moment. And I think the main problem is a lack of integration of the things that we're studying with those wider themes. Um, obviously, all of this is quite partial. There are always people who are doing good work and, and who are doing this. But in my own field, we see uh, a lot of input from our history, um, from architecture, and it's only recently that people have been asking really archaeological questions and obviously there's, there's a growing impetus of this. But I think the main problem is, is the way that our work fits into broader narratives and particularly when we're looking at European narratives of European history. Um, there is a tendency to place Islamic archaeology and history within parentheses. So it's seen as as an interruption, 
Perhaps it's a period during which an area has been conquered by an other, by an outsider. And what this does is it removes it from the greater narrative of European history. And I think that's a problem. I think it's a problem because I'm interested in knowing the past. I could be very political. I could talk about how it's a problem from a political perspective, and those are valid themes. But I'll level with you, that's not what my interests are. Um, I'm aware of the political leverage of these things. And I think that is also a problem that we need to be conscious of. Um, for funding in particular, this is significant. So depending on where you are and which funding body you're approaching, the, this kind of work could either be seen as a real positive, you know, we've got multiculturalism, we've got um, convivencia in Spain, for example, or it could be seen as a negative, these are colonizers, these are unwelcome. Either way, it's having an enormously prejudicial effect on the sorts of um, work that can be done. So that's a problem I think that we all collectively have to be aware of, especially when we're, um, when we're looking at, at putting in applications for funding, when we're looking at reviewing applications. But what I want to achieve is, is impossible, um, because archaeologists, I don't think, we, we're, not, we're not fans of words like truth and reality, because we know that these are things we can't quite get at. But what I do want to do is, is ensure that we're at least not moving so far away from those as to be completely relevant only in a contemporary sense. I, I, want to, I think we should be looking at, the deep, at deeply contextualising our work and at understanding um, the archaeology of Islamic periods or cultures or influences in its deep context. So, and I think there are other issues there, but I don't have time to, to talk about them all. We, we, we definitely have, we suffer <coughs> within European archaeology generally, um, within the EAA, for example, um, from still from a slight bias towards North and Western Europe um, and institutions in those places. And I think there's an issue about um, colonialism as well. And I think you know we're more we're more willing almost to engage with European colonialism in the wider world than to talk about similar issues on, on our own soil. Um, and I think part of this is that we're very concerned with value judgments, and it goes back to the contemporary relevance of, of this. As soon as you put the word Islam in something, it becomes about the religion and and, and less about it, what we're trying to do here. So the question, I suppose, is since the theme of this conference is futures, what is the future of Islamic archaeology in Europe? And um, hopefully it is one of better integration um, between these themes and, and more broader medieval and post-medieval studies. Hopefully um, maybe less of a stranglehold from current political concerns <coughs> And hopefully, ultimately, in the future, I think a session like this won't be necessary because we will have achieved those aims and will be present um, as a fully integrated part of the wider conference themes. So those are a few scattered thoughts from me. May they drift away or contribute to the discussion as you see fit. Thank you very much. I'll leave it to you.